Hey everyone, welcome to another video. In this presentation, we're gonna be talking about OxyFuel cutting. So this is the basic setup uh, of the station that I'm gonna be using today. Take a quick glance from afar. I've got everything here that I'm gonna need for this video. And so let's go ahead and start with the oxygen cylinder. So this first tall cylinder is oxygen. And you're basically gonna follow the same procedures as with OxyFuel welding. Make sure that it's open up all the way. On this regulator, the top gauge is the cylinder pressure, bottom gauge is the working pressure. Use a little knob on the right to set your working pressure to the appropriate uh, PSI. And then the smaller tank is our fuel gas or acetylene. And we're just gonna crack that about half a turn to a full turn. Same thing with the gauges. One is gonna be the pressure for the cylinder. The other one is gonna be your working pressure. And then you'll just uh, go ahead and rotate the adjustment knob to set your working pressure. So I'll take a couple moments here just to kind of give you a glance at my regulators so that way you can see what my working pressure is. Right here is a good uh, time to point out that my settings may not be the same settings you use. Everything is all dependent on the size of your cutting tip and the thickness of the metal that you're trying to cut. So my pressure settings might not be the same pressure settings you use. Just make sure that your setting your pressures accordingly to the, the thickness of metal that you're trying to cut and also the size of your cutting tip. So now let's take a look at what I've got here tool wise. First we've got the hand torch. And we also have a track torch. So the track torch is something that we, or I should say track cutter, something that uses um, a little electronic motor to push it along as it cuts. And then you got various uh, spots where you can adjust the torch. And, uh, but we're not gonna be using that. We're gonna be using the hand torch. So if we look at it, it's very similar to the torch that we use in welding. Uh, the torch body is the same. So if you know which uh, valves are your oxygen and fuel gas, you're already set. The only difference is in place of a welding tip, we now have a cutting attachment. So we see a couple of different things being added here. We have a little lever valve and an additional uh, adjustment knob up towards the top. And then I'll get into what those do here in a moment. But first, let's take a look at some of the tools you're gonna need. So you're gonna need some thick gloves, you know, depending on what you're doing. Um, and then you're going to need a striker, same as with OxyFuel welding. You need something that you can use to uh, strike your, your, your flame. Um, you're also going to need a pair of pliers. I've got some robo grips here. Just, they were the first thing I pulled out of my tool bag. Vice grips will work if you have them. Uh, eye protection. So you're going to want to use uh, shade anywhere from shade 3 to shade 5 goggles. I'm using some shaded glasses. So as you can see here, they are shade 5. Uh, honestly, either or, if you have a welding helmet that goes down to these lower shade lens numbers, then feel free to use that. Uh, a hammer, because, you know, as we're cutting, sometimes our material gets stuck. And then a chipping hammer, because, you know, depending on how you're cutting, you might have some dross to chip off. Uh, and then we also have some tip cleaners, because, you know, our tips do get a little dirty, which can affect our, our flame and even cause uh, some back... Uh, some back flashes, which is not good. And then soapstone, uh, to basically, if you're just starting out learning how to cut, sometimes you might need to just mark the exact path you're taking with the torch. So go ahead and do that with some soapstone. And here I've got my material that I'm gonna be cutting. I've already pre-drawn out some lines. I'm just gonna use these as references. I'm not actually gonna cut on the lines. I'm gonna cut a little in front of or a little before uh, so that way you can get a better view of the flame. I've got another piece of metal on here just to kind of act as a balance. And I'm just showing you the thickness of the metal. So it's not really that thick. It's, uh, it's about one quarter of an inch in thickness. And so one thing that I'm going to be showing you throughout this video is the versatility of the cutting torch. So we're starting off with some thin stuff first. And like I said, I'm just going to be cutting... Uh, either right in front of or right behind these lines that I've pre-drawn out in soapstone. Uh, you know, whatever shape or contour you happen to be cutting, if you need something to draw uh, your path, go ahead and do so, especially now if you're just learning how to use a cutting torch. 
you know, that way you can stay on track and not, you know, cut a crooked line or anything like that. I'm also going to take the time to tell you right now that everything you do, uh, well, mostly everything you do with a cutting torch is going to be done with a push angle. So you're going to be slightly uh, pointing the cutting tip in the direction that you're cutting, especially on thicker pieces of material. Um, well, I shouldn't say that. Really, any thickness of material. Sometimes it might call for uh, pointing the tip in the direction that you're cutting just to help you uh, with the cutting itself. And I'm just showing you how thick this material again uh, one more time because it's really not going to take that long to cut. And so first things first, here's a little dry run. Open up your oxygen or open up your acetylene uh, just a little bit. And then you're going to use the striker to start your flame from the side of the torch. Never hold the striker in front of the torch. That's how you end up with a whole lot of uh, soot accumulation in the striker, which can you know, render it useless in the future. So always remember, hold the striker at the side of the cutting tip and then strike it. Once you're done with that, um, we're gonna go ahead and adjust our oxygen. So the oxygen on the torch body should be open all the way because it's really the valve on the cutting attachment that is gonna allow us to control the oxygen flow that's coming out of the cutting tip. And if you look at the uh, front of the cutting tip right here, you'll see different size orifices. So the small orifices are basically what allows uh, the preheating flame uh, to come out. And then that big orifice in the middle is what gives us our cutting pressure. So when we push down on that oxygen lever, that allows a high pressure stream of oxygen to exit through that large orifice right there in the center. And that is what actually cuts the metal. Those other small orifices uh, on the cutting tip are just for the preheating flame. So just to get the metal nice and hot uh, to the point where we can actually pierce all the way through to the backside with that cutting pressure. And so here I'm just getting ready for the first cut. I'm getting my welding gloves on. Remember, we want to think about safety. And don't worry, I'm just going to show you uh, how it looks from afar and then I'll give you some close-up angles. So here I'm just striking my, my flame. I'm going to adjust my acetylene just a little bit. And you'll get a better view of this here shortly. I'm just doing this from afar so you can kind of, you know, just see what the motions look like. And as you can see, I'm using that, uh, that adjustment knob on the cutting attachment itself to actually control uh, how much oxygen goes into the flame. Now this is a relatively thin material to be using a cutting torch for. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just running a couple passes on top just to preheat that material. Um, these plates were outside overnight so they're a little cold. Um, so I'm just running a couple passes on top just to kind of heat it up. It does help with your cutting operations when you start getting into thicker materials. But this isn't that thick uh, of stuff to begin with so I don't really have to preheat it that much before cutting. And you can see here from start to finish, my cut probably, you know, doesn't even take like 10 seconds to, to get all the way through from one side to the other. And so here is going to be another cut. So again, just a couple passes over just to preheat it a bit. And then once I'm ready or once I feel like I'm ready, I'm going to uh, focus that, that flame onto one side. Once I see it start to get to like a a glowing red, even like a, a bright orange, that metal is going to start to liquefy. Once you see that metal start to melt, that's when you introduce the cutting pressure and then go ahead and proceed into your cut. And so all I'm doing right now is I'm just walking over to my secondary camera, which is going to give you uh, a better view, a close-up view, but it's also it, it also has somewhat of a, a shade filter on it. So you'll be able to see what the flame is doing uh, minus all the bright light. So here I'm just doing uh, another couple of uh, cuts. And so one thing to focus on here is how little time it actually takes for me to cut this metal. Um, it should take you no more than roughly like 10 seconds to cut all the way through from one side to the other on, on this quarter inch plate. It's a uh, it's maybe roughly like four inches wide. So if you think something that's a quarter inch thick and you know, you're cutting 
Uh, a four inch line shouldn't take you that much uh, time at all. And here I'm just showing the camera, the one that's zooming in, that it can be done uh, cutting regardless of, you know, if you're right-handed or left-handed. I'm right-handed, so I typically go from right to left. If you're left-handed, feel free to go from left to right. Or, you know, whichever method is more comfortable for you, as long as you can cut the metal, then that's what counts. And here is a bit of a close up. Now this isn't using the camera that has a, a, a filter on it. This is just a little darkening as I was editing the video, but I still wanted to give you kind of a close up uh, while also giving you a view of like what my hands are doing, what my arms are doing. That way it gives you an idea of what you should be doing um, as you're standing or sitting there and making your cut. So the next view I'm going to give you is going to be of the uh, up close of the cuts with somewhat of a shade lens uh, filter on it to give you just a better idea of what the cut looks like.
And here is a slow-mo of those last two cuts. That way, if there's any specific details that you were trying to get a second look at, you can go ahead and uh, take a better look here. And one thing that I do want to point out here is that at no point uh, during the cut should your, uh, should your torch tip ever come into contact with the base metal. Uh, those flame cones should never come into contact with the base metal either. And here's that left hand cut for you as well. And so after you're done cutting, this is what I mean by dross. So a lot of people confuse dross to be the same as slag. But there's actually a difference and so I'm not going to go into detail too much here I'm just going to show you that dross does appear uh, on our cuts and you know if you did your cuts appropriately your dross will be minimized or minimal uh, but you know if you have dross it shouldn't be too hard to remove here I'm just basically sliding the chipping hammer across the surface of the base plate and it's coming off relatively easy and so I can go ahead and give you a close up of our cut and you'll see that I've removed just about all the dross. And now what I've got here is some slightly thicker material. So remember back I said I was going to show you the versatility of oxyfuel cutting. So here we've got something that is a little bit thicker and so here's a side by side comparison. So the smaller stuff was about a quarter of an inch. Uh, this stuff that I am going to be cutting right now, it's it's a uh, it's not quite half an inch. I'd say seven sixteenths. I actually didn't get the measurement of the thickness during this video. I should have. Uh, so I'm just giving you my best guess. It's it's about double the size, but it's not quite half an inch. So let's just say seven sixteenths. And so here again, I'm giving you uh, some close ups, uh, but also. A little bit farther away uh, that way you can kind of get an idea of what my position is while I'm standing how I'm rotating my hands my wrists that way it gives you a better idea of how your motion should go while you're cutting and now here I I can cut through this material relatively fast but it is slightly thicker so you want to make sure just to slow down your travel speed just a little bit just so that way you can maintain that smooth cut um, while also keeping a decent travel speed and so here is just another cut and so while i'm cutting this plate i actually am cutting relatively close to the line just because i want to cut uh, in an area that's got a lot of meat to it. So you can see that this plate does have some areas where it's been punched out. So I want to give you the idea or, you know, kind of give it the effect that I'm actually cutting through solid plate. And here's my left hand cut. So again, just showing you that you can use the cutting torch no matter if you're right handed, left handed. Um, I am doing these, uh, directional cuts using the same hands in the same spot so you know 
again, whatever works for you. If you find that holding the torch with one hand uh, in one spot and the other hand in the other while cutting in this direction or that direction, you know, whatever works for you, whatever's comfortable, so long as you can produce a good quality cut, then, you know, stick with that. Now, once you're done, go ahead and chip with the dross off and here's what my cut looks like. And this last plate that I'm gonna be cutting, this thing is a, a bit of a beast. So as I hold the two plates side, or pretty much right next to each other for some size comparison, uh, this plate is approximately one inch in thickness and so let me go ahead and reposition the camera just to give you another point of view here. And so everything is pretty much going to be the same process. So I'm going to light the torch just the same as before. If anything, I'm probably going to open up the acetylene just a tad bit more uh, on the torch body just so I can have a, a bit of a hotter flame. And of course, by adding a little bit of extra acetylene, I'm gonna have to add more oxygen to reach uh, that neutral flame, uh, but I'm still gonna cut it the same. Uh, so if anything, I'm probably gonna preheat it just a little bit more. Instead of those really quick passes that I was making, I'm, I'm gonna slow down, so that way the heat stays a little bit more uh, consistent throughout the entire plate. And my travel speed is also going to uh, slow down a bit. So just remember that thinner material, you can cut through uh, fairly fast, but when you start cutting stuff that's thicker and thicker and thicker, um, you know, it's gonna take you a little bit more time. You're gonna want to work on your patience. Uh, this isn't something you're just gonna be able to get into or just cut it in a blink of an eye. Okay, so depending on, you know, what you're cutting, the shape that you're cutting, the thickness that you're cutting, it's gonna take a little bit uh, extra time if it's fairly thick. Uh, my angles are gonna be pretty much the same, so I'm still going to point the tip in the direction that I'm cutting. And so the reason why I'm doing this, especially on thicker material, is so that those preheating flames can uh, you know, push some heat in front of the cut so that way um, the, the metal maintains its heat, its temperature, that way it's a little bit easier to cut and I don't have to uh, slow down my travel speed, uh, you know, that drastic. Um, so on my first couple cuts, I did actually have to use the hammer. I had to go over this, this first cut, especially, I think uh, my travel speed was just a little slow. And so what happens if you go too slow is that dross that builds up on the underside, it fuses back on itself. So even though you can see a clear cut from, you know, from our point of view, because the dross fuses back on itself on the underside, that plate or that piece that you just cut isn't going anywhere. You've got to uh, cut through that dross. And so a good way to keep the dross from fusing on itself is just maintaining uh, an appropriate travel speed. So if you go too slow, you'll notice that your piece just ends up fusing back on itself. And if you go too fast, well, you're not really gonna cut anything. Uh, think of it like welding. If you're going too fast, then you're essentially skipping ahead of the weld puddle. Well here, it's not really a weld puddle, so to speak, but there is a, a molten, uh, an area of molten base metal uh, that we want to uh, to keep fluid so that way we can keep that cut going. You know, you can't cut through metal that's not hot enough. So there, there's no one universal rule that you have to go this fast or this slow. It's all dependent on the thickness of the material and a little bit of, uh, of your own personal technique. So here, again, I have to go over my cut And if you find yourself in a situation where you're having to go over your cut again, you know, don't worry about it, especially right now. You're learning how to use the cutting torch. Mistakes are going to happen. You know, mistakes happen to the best of us. 
Uh, it just so happens I was a little bit uh, on the rusty side when it comes to cutting thick material. So, you know, no pun intended, but I'm essentially shaking the, the rust off uh, of my skills here. And here I've got my left hand cut. And another thing that you wanna look for when you're cutting metal is on the underside, you see all those sparks that are coming out of the backside. So you wanna see sparks. If you see a nice heavy shower of sparks, that's a good thing. That means you're cutting through the metal. When you start seeing more uh, globs, then that means that your travel speed is a little on the slow side. And so that, that cut is fusing back on itself. And that's when you're going to see those globs of metal versus sparks. So if you see sparks, good thing. If you see globs, eh, not so much of a good thing. And I think the only change in my technique that I made here was uh, instead of going slow or faster, I just decrease the distance between my cutting tip and the base metal. And I think that allowed me to uh, decrease my dross and have a cleaner cut on this try. And I'm just adjusting the darkness on my secondary camera so that way I can give you another view, uh, taking out even more of the bright light so that way you can focus more on the cut itself. And so here are those cuts. Once I'm done with that, same thing as before, I want to remove as much dross as I can with the chipping hammer. Here's just a view of the cut. So some more dross is chipping off as I'm just scraping the chipping hammer across that surface. And so you should be able to see uh, all the cut lines and this is gonna tell you more information about your cut, your travel speed, whether you're too hot, too cold, and all that kind of good stuff. Oh, and before I forget, here are those, uh, those video clips from my secondary camera. So this is the plate that's, you know, roughly half an inch and so here are just going to be some dark shots at those previous cuts. So go ahead, take a look at that.
And then here are the dark shots from that plate that's approximately uh, one inch thick. And so these are all the same cuts that you saw beforehand. This is just all from the second camera that I have, giving you a view uh, through somewhat of a shade lens um, perspective. So that way, again, it removes all that bright light and you're actually able to focus on the flame, the cut, the sparks, and all that good stuff.
All right, and that's it for the one inch plate. Those are all my cuts. And now here are just a, a couple of photos. So the first two photos are going to be of that quarter inch plate, or sorry, my mistake. The first two photos are gonna be of that half inch plate. So just showing you the cut lines, the cutting face, and if your travel speed, if your heat, if everything is um, appropriately set, then your cut lines should be uniform. Um, you can see areas where I had a little mishap uh, towards the middle there. I don't know if my hand jerked or something happened, but you can definitely tell that there was something happened. You know, you can look at the shape of the cut lines and you can specifically point out that something happened right there. Um, I could have been a lot more consistent in my cut, but you know, that's for another time. This is just to kind of show you what your cut lines kind of kind of tell us about your cut. Um, and then the following two images are going to be uh, from that one inch plate. Same thing, uh, cut lines. This is from my last cut, so my technique was a lot better after I shook that rust off. And so looking at the cut lines, they're a lot more uniform, they're a lot more consistent. So this tells me that my flame was set correctly, that my distance from the cut was you know, correct or, you know, around where it should have been. My travel speed was good. Um, so overall, this is what we want to see in a cut. We want to be able to point out nice uniform uh, cut lines. If you start to see them changing direction uh, like you can at one side, uh, that tells me that, you know, I was going maybe a little bit too fast and that cut wasn't really able to keep up as well as it was um you know, during the first part of the cut. So, you know, travel speed, angles, the settings that we have for our gases, both at the regulators and at the torch body, you know, it's everything. There's a lot of different variables that go into this. And so, you know, again, we're learning how to do this. Don't expect to become a master after your first or second cut. If you do, hey, that's great. If you need a little bit more practice, that's fine, that's okay. This is what we're here to do. We're here to learn, and so take all the time that you need in order to perfect your craft. All right, that's pretty much it for oxyfuel cutting. I will see you in the next video.